Good afternoon, golfers. I am going to show you a video of my golf fitness regime from Dynamic Motion Golf Performance in Calgary. Now, late in the summer, I was experiencing back pain and hip pain, and really the number one factor to poor performance on the golf course for me was the golf fitness part of it. When my back was hurting and my hip was hurting, I certainly couldn't bend or go after the ball like I wanted to. So what I did was I sought these folks out who are TPI or Titleist Performance Institute certified uh, coaches with uh, some of whom have kinesiology degrees. So they understand body movements, especially as they relate to golf. So I had my assessment done. I was poor in several areas. So they came up with a plan for me uh, going forward and the video that I'm going to show you is the uh, latest plan for um, movement, flexibility, even strengthening. So once again, this program is designed for me specifically. I do encourage if anybody wants to do something similar to please seek out professional advice prior to doing so. Enjoy the video. I'm here at Dynamic Motion Golf Performance with uh, my coach, Michael Green. Do you want to maybe uh, give a little bit of background on, on yourself, Michael, and uh, how sure. you got into this? Sure, yeah. Uh, I'm currently a golf fitness and injury prevention specialist here at Dynamic Motion Golf Performance. And I found my way here to uh, the golf world through uh, healthcare, primarily working with uh, physios and uh, uh, different healthcare specialists in uh, different conditions like lower back injuries, hips and knees and shoulders. And my love of golf brought me here about three years ago. So I've been here working uh, in the gym with uh, golfers, getting them back in shape and uh, in better shape to play golf the way they want to. Yeah, well, thanks, Michael. I appreciate the help that you've given me. And, uh, you know, I can assure you that I'm much better than when I, <laughs> before I came in here. Hopefully. So thanks very much. <laughs> yeah, Thank no you. problem. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then stand. Everything, hold the core, yep, and squat. Yep. Okay. Should I be squatting farther down? Nope, half squat's fine for these guys. As you get deeper and deeper into that squat, oh. a real strong tendency, and everyone does it regardless of how strong or how stable the back is, to get into that right position. So we just need you half squatting for now. So, like that? Yep, and then stand. Oh. There's a lot going on there. Yeah, how many of these should I be doing? Uh, so if you have that period or that, that stretch of, uh, you know, hallway or space in your gym where you can do that in the exercise, and if you can just do it like a side step squat pull. Oh, I see. Pull. So you're going to go down and back. Going down the line. So however many reps that is. Okay. Could be eight, could be 12. Got you. Yeah, like it's cramping right there. So cramps are very, very, very common in these gyms because what the size is like a smaller one, uh, like one of those four pound ones. Okay. It works great too. We have these in the gym. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. If you're at home and you don't have one of those medicine balls, that's why we keep these guys here. This thing is like a loaded up backpack or a book bag or backpack. You can do this. So you're just gonna squeeze the backpack, take a step, we're gonna load that front leg, and I'm just gonna turn. Okay. Turn. Both ways. Turn, both ways, exactly. So step, short step, load that front leg. So I'm almost just using this back leg like a little kickstand. It's got almost no weight on it. Right. Load it for you and me, backswing, hold it, follow through. Okay, let's try. So you can use a bag, you can use a ball. Let's use the ball. It's well, a, little, a little less dusty. <laughs> so, how high up, like? I want you to squeeze that ball center of your chest. Okay, like that. Load. Is that too big of a step? Uh, yeah, it looks short. Yeah, you got it. Load. Perfect. Back swing. Oh. And, and trying to do the same belt buckle to this yeah, guy. With every, absolutely every guy 
exercise maybe minus like a half hour or something when we're yeah. switching it? Really nice. So short step. Load that left side. Yeah. yeah. Over the golf ball. Back swing. Follow through. Beauty. <clears throat> And try to keep my thighs at the same angle, like it, yeah. like yeah. perpendicular. Yeah. So I like to say hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips. Okay. Right. It's crossing kind of mid upper back, which is exactly where we want. Okay. If I see a lot of uh, twisting down below your lumbar, yeah. that's a little bit of a red flag. Okay. I want you to turn this mid upper back, mid, okay. not with your lumbar. Okay. This one. Um, one thing that I didn't spend a lot of time because we think that we got maybe six or seven exercises last time. Uh, but when we did your assessment, if you remember, when I had you kind of stand and then I had you do those rotations, if you remember that. Yeah. I want to see a little, I want to get a little more rotation. Yeah. Yeah. On your shoulders. So I'm just going to get you laid flat on your back here. Okay. just kind of stretch that capsule in your shoulder by letting the weight just kind of hang. So the idea here is to let that rotator cuff and specifically like the, the capsule where this bone runs into your, your shoulder joint, we want that to stretch up and release a little bit. Okay. So depending on how flexible or inflexible people are, um, I might boost this up or maybe if, if, if they need to be quite tight I just get them to do it flat on the ground um, I think for you something like this little okay. boost would be good and then I'm just using letting the weight of that two pound yeah just take me back and I'm trying to relax ten big deep breaths take a second check it out ten big deep breaths again through the movement I want you to do I call it a robot but so same position on your back I'll get you to go flat on your back and we're going to do both at the same time you're going to go one down and one up and then you're going to switch. The goal now, after we've stretched that position, I want you to try to now get a little oomph in there to get the knuckles to hit right. the floor yeah. without sacrificing that lower back. Right. So you're going to want to come up and then switch. Knuckles touch. Really nice. So now we're working on internal rotation, and the one that we stretched is that external, external. rotation. Yeah, guys typically cheat for having inflexible shoulders or very tight shoulders or lacking that rotation in, in top of the backswing is they'll come up to the top of their backswing if I'm a right-handed golfer. And then, so this is about all I got out of that shoulder. So then what they'll do, to, to, okay, then they get no, oh, well, I need to get my club higher because I'm going after a driver here. They'll go like this. Yeah, they'll lift, lift up, up. Right? So when you have a really nice flexible shoulder, you can stay down on the ball a whole lot longer and get into that position. Right. 
right? Versus my shoulder stops here. Yeah. Now I've got to go, mm, I don't like where I'm at. I want to do a John Daly swing. And you get into this. Yes, right. Where my hand is with that knuckle. Yeah. Yep. Still switching, yep. Push, five seconds. Push, five, four, three, two, one. Now switch. In my hand. Hold it and push. Give me a little pressure. Four, <laughs> three, that's good. Two, one. So that umph I was talking about, yeah. this is the this is that push where we want to get those muscles engaged. Hold it five, four, three, two, one. Really nice. <sighs> Oh, my hamstrings are so tight right now. <laughs> well, after doing some weight training, you're going to be... So like that, try to keep the lower back to the lower back, exactly. floor. For everything, support that lower back with a strong core. So when I'm coming over here, I'm seeing you're not quite getting to 100% vertical. Yeah. So we just need to back this off. Okay. So I'll, what I always like to say to people, I say the same thing a lot. Um, Monday might be different from Tuesday. So on Monday, you do like a leg strength training day. Tuesday, you might be stiff and sore. Yeah. But I still want you to go through the proper range of motion with this. So maybe Tuesday, you'll be up here. Right. But because the legs are a little tight, you just need to be back here. Today. Okay. So it goes straight. Because we want it straight. I want okay. it straight. Yep. Gotcha. You have something that we can anchor a band to. Okay. So if you remember, the exercise is you're going to stay in your sit bones. I'm keeping that core maintained. And then I'm going to try to drop that knee in and down, twisting motion towards my ankle, right? So now we've mastered that one, we're going to add a little resistance. So that band is going to stop, try and stop me from going through the range of motion, but it's the same thing with just a little resistance. So now I'm trying to, what I call kind of leg wrestle, <laughs> and pin that knee down and in. Right. So now all we're doing, same exercise, but I'm adding some strength to the system, right? So now that groin has to work a whole lot harder to get through that range of motion. Right. Sure. Okay. So it's the same knee dropping exercise that you did from before. Yep. In and down. And back. Nice. Not bad at all. It's harder. <laughs> Sure. So it's going to make you engage those abdominals a whole lot more. I don't mind. I don't mind you have your hands behind you, so you're in kind of okay. a yeah, yeah. position. But I still want you to maintain that core. You know what I mean? Right. And you're trying to pin that knee in and down. Perfect. For you, the right side was the tightest. So what you should feel like is number one, you sit back into a nice big lat stretch. And then really slowly, I'm going to take where I put my wallet in my back right pocket, and I'm going to pull it down and away. Hmm. Right? So it should almost feel like after you've done your lat stretch, you're doing this. Right? Shifting your weight kind of to the left, and the right hip's going to go down, down? and away. Yep. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? <laughs> Get that body weight back. Yeah, you did it. You brought the belt buckle up. Now your body weight's doing a lot of the work, and it's going to feel like you're stretching here. Yes. Once you feel you locked in that stretch and you're relatively comfortable, yes. you're going to try to drop this right hip down and away towards my feet. Oi. Yep. <laughs> this is the tight side. Yeah. Which I'm glad why I'm doing it. Breathe. 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 Ideally 10 breaths again. You're doing a great job keeping that belt buckle up and isolating through here. That's really good. Breathe in, breathe in, breathe. So it's going to, especially that right side, I'm not surprised that you say you feel it more in the arm because everything on that right side is so locked up, it's going to take a couple weeks to okay. really let that area release. Okay. Yeah. So you probably feel it a little more on the left when you do that, yeah. that drop. Yeah. On the right, it's like trying to drop, but it's not dropping because everything is like holding yeah. on for dear life. Okay. So it's not going to happen in the first week. Or okay. It's, it's going to take some time. And we're going to anchor the band to something about shoulder height or chest height. Okay. And then we're going to do, I call it the triangles. So your band is going to go from a small triangle, you see here, to a big triangle. Right. Okay. So we're just going to go small to big. Okay. So all sides, so you're going to be pulling it apart and back. All sides of the triangle are getting larger. Okay. 
So like shoulder height? Yep, or shoulder height with the anchor, shoulder height with the pull. Yep, that's right. And the same thing kind of golf. Yep, we're holding that core. Everything pretty much except the cat tail. Drop those shoulders down. I don't want you to feel too much tension up in the traps. Okay. But the elbows are going to be higher. So release that triangle back to a small one again. Forward, yep. Drop the shoulders, drop the shoulders. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like and back to the start. So I'm gonna slow, that's it. Now these are gone soft. Perfect. Okay. So those traps and the neck muscles where we hold, where you hold a lot of tension. Yes. Top, they need to be relaxed. The trick here is is to slowly get the elbows to go up, but the shoulders aren't allowed to come up to your ears. Does oh. that make sense? So okay. now bring the elbows up slightly, kind of to here, a little bit. Yep. But do not raise. Is that still yeah. tight? Yeah. Let's try a little further up. Okay. That's it. Okay. So this is a little, this is not quite as high to your earlobes. That's it. So now we're working across that mid upper back. Right. I can feel it in my shoulder too. Oh, you're going to feel it in the shoulder for sure. Really nice. <laughs> so the trick for you, because immediately when you got on there and you were going like, oh, this is going to be a little bit of tension on some shoulders that maybe aren't used to that tension, your body did this. Yeah. It went up, I'm exaggerating, obviously, but it went up to you. Your shoulders went up to your ears. Right. I want you to get used to, even though you're pulling it high, you're not lifting your whole chest and shoulders up out of the position, because right. that's where that neck starts to get. So when I pull it back, do I want to be more chest height? Chest or? Yep. Okay. Chest height. Let's try it again. Yeah, perfect. Nailed it. Your shoulders stay down from your ears, but your elbows are pulling it high. Yeah. I'm doing that core engaged. We're still doing a regular old push-up. Core engaged push-up. What we're going to add to that push-up is as you're pushing up, I want this knee to go to that elbow. So holding the core, knee to elbow, knee to elbow. So we're twisting that lower half and, and engaging by engaging the core. <laughs> Let's try. Okay. <laughs> so we do core engage. Give me a couple of straight up push ups first. Beautiful. Don't change a thing. Core is engaged. Your belt buckles up. Awesome. The next one, let's try to bring the knee up to the elbow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then bring it down. Switch sides. Knee to elbow. Beautiful. <laughs> bring that up, 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 up. Good. <sighs> really nice. <sighs> Reach. So, um, in the gym, if you're doing this type of an exercise, it would look like this. Right? Like a, a, a pull down type exercise. For us golfers, we're very rarely turning into the open side. In our backswing, we're turning into kind of think of it like a closed side because this hip isn't allowed to be open. This mm. would be a whole lot easier. In yeah. the backswing, harder on the downswing though. So, what we're going to do is have the same hand and same foot forward. Does that make sense? So, now as I pull, turn, reaching, I'm trying to turn into that hip like my follow through, right? Right. So where you get stuck on that right side is exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to get turned into that hip, chest to the target as I pull and activate. Right. Deadlifts like in the gym, um, or even if you're using dumbbells, you should always have that weight or the bar pretty close mm. to your shins and your thighs as you do those deadlifts. That's what really separates a deadlift from a squat. So a squat, I can still do it in this position, but I'd be squatting down, mm. dropping my hips way down, my knees are coming forward, and I'm standing up. Versus a hinge, my, my shins stay almost vertical, and I sit back and keep my hips high, versus a squat, which was way down here. Mm -hmm. so that kind of separates yeah. it. So the, the little reminder that I like to give to everyone, not just you, is if I were to do a squat in the gym with a bar, I would have the bar glued to my thighs, and I would trace the bar down my thighs and down my shins, for a perfect deadlift, for a perfect squat, I'm going to let it go out in front and let my hips come way down. Okay. Kind of make sense? Yeah. So let's try it with the stick first. So which one are we doing? The 
Deadlift? Yeah, let's do deadlift. That's for golfers where we're going to be spending most of our time. Perfect. And then coming on. You got it. Hand in hand, hand in hand. And come on. Good. On that last one especially, you did a little better job of holding this. Okay, yeah, I got to remember that. Yeah, that's perfect, right there. Hold that core as you come up, as you're coming through. Beautiful. That's it. You got it. So if you ever need a reminder and you're like, oh, my deadlifts don't feel quite right, or maybe there's too much stress on my back, or if, if you feel like it's just not clicking and I'm feeling, not feeling in the right areas, mainly hamstrings and glutes, grab a stick and just go, oh yeah, that's where I need to be. Trace okay. the stick down your side. So when we go to a weight like this, what I'm doing is I'm still gluing it to my hips. I'm still thinking of core engage, belt buckle up. I'm hinging that weight. If I were to hold a bar, it's kind of scraping my hips again. It's kind of the beauty of a, of a kettlebell. Mm -hmm. It can go right kind of between your, your legs like that. Okay. Let's try it with the weight. Hinge, hinge, hinge. Beautiful. Pull that core as you come up. Perfect. Don't change it there. Hinge, hinge, hinge. Push through the floor. Get sure. Good. 